Well, hello, folks. We're going to try this again. Um, I just I just created this video. I'm going to create it again. All right. So what I wanted to do was um, go over some of that. I've been playing with this all day today. And, uh, you know, in light of some of the challenges you guys were having and um, came to the conclusion that, uh, you know, in the end, your numbers have to make sense with the data. And sometimes when you get to these four, uh, especially the fourth, fifth, and sixth order polynomials, polynomial functions, that they don't necessarily make sense. They, they may produce a line of best fit that looks great, but they may not make uh, full sense. So um, that's what I want to explore here a little bit, and then how we can better address the question of changes in rates and accelerations of sea level today versus under human influences versus uh, the last, well, 150 to 2,000 plus years uh, of human influence. So what I've done here is um, created a couple of uh, spreadsheets. This one in particular here, uh, what I've done is I broke up into two different worksheets. You don't have to do it this way, but this is the way I chose to do it. Uh, the Cicero Global Average Data. And what I did with it was to produce um, uh, just a second order. So what I broke it up with was broke it up by um, chunks, 1888 to 1960 and then 1990 to the present, or to 2009 as far as it goes. And by doing that, I was able to graph the two um, separately. And again, you don't have to create two, two worksheets to do that, but I, I went ahead and did that. And I only fit a second order polynomial to it. So here it is. Uh, this is for the, uh, the 1860 to 1980 to 1960 data. Now, what I did was I took this, um, took this equation and I copied it. And then I run over to this nifty little uh, uh, program over here uh, called uh, well, symbolab.com, which some of you I think discovered. Uh, and this is one. This is probably the easiest one I've found to work with in terms of actually finding a derivative. So uh, there's there there's my equation that came right off of the Excel spreadsheet. Before I go hit click go and find the first derivative. I need to change my, I need to fix my exponent. So I'll click on this little button here and put in a two. That fixes my exponent. So now that equation should look just like it does in Excel. And if I hit go, that's LaTeX format, by the way, if you're curious about the font. Uh, it'll it then produces, uh, here's the steps, it then produces my first derivative. And of course, the second derivative is just going to be a value. Now, if I go back to uh, my, my, uh, data here, you can see what I did was I put in my first derivative. And all I did was copy that function and pasted it up here. This is the x value here, and I just went and replaced the x with the cell a2. Now, if this were a higher order function, say a second order function um, as my first derivative, I would then again replace all the x's with cell a2 because I'm interested in the instantaneous velocity at, at a particular time. And so that's what I'm trying to relate. All right. Otherwise, everything's the same. And I hit enter. And this is my value, 0.82 uh, millimeters per month. And that's per month here, not per year, by the way. So if I take the next derivative, the second derivative of that, I just end up with a number, which is 0 0.0132 millimeters per month per month. So um, what I've done here is uh, curiosity, because you know this is just a line function. So I went ahead and graph this as a line. And uh, that, of course, a positive, a positive velocity over time, an increasing uh, positive velocity makes sense. If I look at this function, and if I imagine drawing tangent lines all along here, they should all be, they should be increasing in velocity, but they should all have a positive trend as far as lines go. So that actually makes sense. Again, we want the data to make sense with what we're getting for graphs. Um, overall, the acceleration for this period of time is about 0 0.0132 millimeters per Per month per month now i did the same thing over here all right uh, i did a third order uh actually i did a fourth order if you do a third order you get weird data but i did a fourth order that, in this case and what i did with that was to take again this equation and i put it into symbol lab which then spit out a, a first and then a second derivative uh which of course this is the first derivative here you can see again i replaced my x values with a2 in, in all cases. Um, and then I drug, and then I hit enter, and I simply drag 
the corner of the box down and it calculates everything for me. Then over here, this is the second derivative, which is this case is a second order polynomial. And again, I replaced all the uh, x's with a2. So <clears throat> these these velocities and accelerations are probably, they, they're numbers that are really high. Uh, I mean, they must be accurate, but I, you know, sort of wrapping my head around, does it make sense? I'm still thinking through that one. Um, now, if I treat it, if I treat this as a second order polynomial, and right now what you're seeing is a fourth, but I also did a second order polynomial function, and this was my first derivative, and you can see those velocities make sense, and that's what I've actually I've graphed here is the acceler was the was the velocity for the third order polynomial, and then the acceleration, the second derivative here. If I graph the time versus the second order here, I'm going to get. Uh, a, lot, a nice line, of course, and it's positive, which makes sense, uh, and increasing over time, which also makes sense. Okay, if I look at the acceleration, you can see the the velocities are in the 1.6 to 1.8 range, and over here they're 0.82 to point. So you can see the velocity, the instantaneous rate of change is higher for the more recent data, which makes sense. It fits what you're seeing here, and then this value of 0.0996 millimeters per month per month is much higher than the 0.0132. Um, not quite an order of magnitude, but pretty high. So modern sea level change is not only happening faster, it's it's actually accelerating at a higher rate than it was back in the 1880 to 1960 time period. And now I've used my math to, um, to quantify that. Now you might be asking yourselves, where did, how did I fix the date? You'll note that this is, this date function here looks nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what you need to do to fix the date for, say, um, one like the North Carolina coast here. This date, um, actually, I fixed this date. The one I you can see what I've done here is I fixed that date. What I didn't, the one I didn't fix yet is the Alaska coast. So if I look at the title gauge for Alaska, and I go to the data source here, um, I had to go back to the original data source. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I did it. I'm not going to expect you to do it because, frankly. Um, you know, you've got other things to do. I go back to the relative sea level trend, which I'm already there, and I export to CSV, and I go ahead and open the file. Um, I have to do a little bit of deleting of stuff. That's the trend line material. Uh, this is the stuff I was doing in the background that you didn't, you never had to deal with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and insert a, I'm sorry, insert a, a, a row over here. Um, I'm going to take and say this cell plus... Um, this cell divided by 12. And what that does is it converts. This value is now the same as April of 1964. If I drag this on down, it'll do that for all of them. But of course, in reality, I don't need the data up to 2025 because those years haven't happened yet. <laughs> I only need it to 2019 so I can get rid of this data. I can go ahead and delete that. And this is the data that I have left. Now, honestly, the only data that I'm really concerned about uh, are these two data columns. So I'm going to go ahead and copy those for you. And I'm going to ahead and put them back over here. And oops, <laughs> I better paste special on that one, right? Um, paste values. There we go. All right. And this is going to be the date. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So... Again, this is monthly mean sea level. So I'm going to probably get end up inserting columns over here, probably a couple of them, to get my, my uh, instantaneous uh, velocities and my accelerations. All right. Um, and then I can, once I get the equations, I can then put them in here. Uh, this data, of course, has a very different look to it. Uh, if I go over here and look at the data, uh, you can see it's got a negative trend. Right, so the Gulf of Alaska sea level is actually going down. Uh, interestingly, um, you know, this when you look at the regional scenarios, that doesn't last forever. In all but two of the scenarios, sea level uh, accelerations will begin to decrease and then eventually start to increase into the future. So that's some of the stuff I want you to think about. But for the time being, anyway, um, I wanted to go over some of that. I would suggest to you that the best way to deal with this is to um, you know, use the, the, the uh, website I've given you here, this, um, this website here, I'm sorry, this one here, Symbolab, to actually figure out the uh, derivatives. 
just remembering that you need to fix the exponent in the equation. Okay, you can do them by hand as well. That's fine. Uh, I mean, it doesn't take that long to do them by hand, honestly. And then um, go ahead and uh, put the functions in here once you have them. And make sure that you're changing all your x values to reference the cell A2 for each of these spreadsheets because that's the, the date you're interested in. Uh, and then, um, you know, you can split your data up however you want to do it to look at, especially if you have long data sets. This data, I wouldn't bother splitting it up. I would fit a curve to it and probably no more than a second order polynomial for the Alaska data. And just calculate the first derivative, calculate the second derivative. And then you can look at what that data is doing and compare that to just North Carolina. The purpose of the Alaska data is just to understand the differences in relative sea level or a local change as opposed to the global uh, data you see with the Cicero data set here. Okay. All right. I'm going to end it there. Hopefully this is helpful. Uh, Mrs. Kloos will have more for you later. Until then, talk to you later.